So we've been working with the Django shell and typing commands in to insert records and populate fields and create the both sides of many to many and then link them together. And so it, it, some applications that we're going to build, you're going to put up your super social um, ride sharing thing that you just built and people are going to start filling it with data. But other times you're actually building a website for which the data is already known. You might actually be reading a bunch of data and putting it into a database from some source. Maybe it's an API, maybe you're scraping or whatever. And so you have some source of data and you want to put it into the database and you don't want to put it in by hand. And so we're going to talk a little bit how you can write a script to load data into your Django database, into your Django models after you've defined those Django models. And so we're going to actually take some CSV data, we're going to read it from a file, and it's just comma separated values and we're going to use the, uh, the, the course person membership model from before and we're going to say basically uh, here's a person with their email address, their role which is instructor or learner, and then the course that they're in. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a script to read through all those things and then insert and populate. Because you got to, when you're making a many-to-many, you've got to like put both sides in and then connect it together. And so the code will be in DJ Free Samples scripts many load.py. That's the code to load it, to read this file, and then create it, put it into DBSQLite, informed by the data model in the in the many-to-many -many example that I gave you with the with the course stuff. Okay, so so that's what this is. Now running scripts is part of a feature of Django called the Django extensions. Now if you've already done this through when you you installed uh, DJ Free Samples and you ran pip minus pip three minus r requirements.txt, you already put this in. But it doesn't hurt to be go into your virtual environment and type pip install Django pip three install Django extensions and make sure it's already there. Because if it's not already there, then it will get installed. Otherwise, this whole script thing won't work, right? You after you install it, you do have to put a little link into your settings.py to that's Django extent Django under store extensions in your installed apps. And there's documentation on how to do, how all to do this. So this is the first thing you've got to do. Once you've installed it with pip, you have to pull it into your Django application. So when Django first loads up, which is python3manage.py, at that point that says pull this in, pull this in, pull all these other things in. All your apps, your extensions, the Django features you need, etc., 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 and that's in the project settings.py file. So Django extensions won't work if you don't put it in this file. Now, if you're running on Python anywhere, of course, after you edit this file, you gotta, you gotta reset your web, but I think you probably figured that out by now. We wouldn't have got this far if you weren't resetting your web server on uh, Python anywhere. The next thing you do is within your uh, Django project file, you make a scripts folder. And you, you put this file, empty file, touches the Unix command to create an empty file script slash underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. This is just kind of a thing you do. And what it is is an indication as Python is reading through these folders to say this folder contains modules that are suitable for importing. And that's just a signal. And I think later versions of Python make this less important, but we've always put this in. So if you're going to put like classes that are intended to be imported into some other application, we always put this empty file underscore underscore init dot under, two underscores init two underscores dot py. So touch says make an empty file of this name. So let's take a look at our files inside of the DJ Free Samples folder. So um, I am currently in the DJ Free Samples folder and it's the main folder. The settings are in DJ Free Samples. Um, we're also in the same folder as the manage.py because we're going to be running commands, the manage.py commands. We're all playing with the folders cats and in the scripts. So the cats is where we have the models. Cats models.py. So we have two models. We have a cat model that has two normal fields. One's a nickname field that's up to 200 characters. The weight field is a floating point number. And then the breed is a foreign key into 
the breed model and the breed model other than its you know indexes and i mean its, it's primary key has one field called its name and of course you want to be able you want to have run you know, your migrations you probably already did this no more migrations to run if you run a migrate it'll say i'm all taken care of because these were here when you first checked this out. So the migrations, yeah, so we're good now. So the data is in a file called cats slash meow.csv. And comma separation, uh, it's got a heading at the top, name, breed, weight. We're going to skip that in a second. And then you've got the, the cat's name, the breed, and the weight. Now the key problem here is from a data modeling, we've got some vertical replication. Manx, Manx, Tabby, Tabby, Sphinx, Sphinx. So we can't create a whole bunch of breeds. We can't just put these in as strings. So we're going to create a many to one relationship and the breed is going to be in a table. There. Yeah, cats. Back to the model. All right, we're going to put the, each breed is going to go in uniquely, and then we're going to get a primary key for that breed. And then when we insert each cat, we're going to reference or point to using a foreign key, point to that breed. So let's take a look at the scripts. Now, just the way this works is you've got to put these scripts in a separate folder. And the reason is, is so that, you know, these, this import statement works. So that has to, so, so there's a whole bunch of stuff to load Python up, but then load your Django application up as well. And once your Django application is loaded, then this cat's model exists and we can import the breed. And if we look through the code, we're going to open the file cat slash meow.csv that we just looked at. We're going to use a CSV reader. Now you could do this with a split and commas if you really wanted to, um, but we are going to um, skip past that header. Remember the header, this was the first line. We're going to skip past that. And so we can run this over and over again. We're going to just call cat objects all delete to get, and same for breed to get rid of any data we put in because it lets us run this over and over and over again. And so now we, we've read the first line, so we're going to start the second line, and then we can just iterate through the remainder of the CSV reader. I'll print the row out. And this line here that says B created equals breed objects getter create name equals row one. So the first thing is this row one is going to be, in this case, Sphinx for the first one, and then Burmese for the second one, and Max Max. So this is a pretty cool, this getter create method is a pretty cool thing. It's saying, if there is a breed with a name of Sphinx, get it for me. If it is not, make it for me, and then get it for me. And that whatever, whether it's created or retrieved, it comes in this variable B. And created is just if you want, it returns a true or a false as to whether it was newly created. Sometimes your code is more sophisticated and wants to know if it's the first one. So then we have to create a cat object. And let's just take a look. The uh, cat slash models dot py to recall that the breed has a single variable, a single field name. And cat has nickname, breed, and weight. But breed is a foreign key. It's this special kind of thing. And so what we're going to do is we've got a breed object, you know, in that that was created with, in this first line, Sphinx. And then we're going to make a cat object. And the row sub zero, which is in this case Abby, is the nickname. The breed is a reference to the breed object, which is in this variable B. So breed is the field inside of the model, inside of the cat model, and then B is the actual row that it's pointing to. So that's a real live saved row in the variable B. And then weight is the third column, which is in this case 6.4. And you know that just by calling the cat constructor, we do not actually store it, but you call it to call c.save. And then this loop goes round and round through all the readers, and eventually it creates all these things. So let's go ahead and run this. Python 3 managed py run script. 
that's load, I think. Hopefully I got it right. Oh, yeah, maybe I should put a T in there. There we go. And so it's successfully loaded. This is just printing as the rows are read, but it's all loaded in. Now, we can verify this by saying SQLite 3 db.sqlite. That's a database. Now, i got to be in the right folder for this to work. And I can say dot tables to see what the tables are. So we're kind of going down to SQL, and you can see the cats breed and the cats cat. So I'll say select star from cats underscore breed. And these are the breeds. And they're the primary keys. So Sphinx is 26, Burmese, Manx, and you'll see we've only put them in once. And then I'm going to say select star from cats cat limit 10. And so we've got Abby with a weight of 6.4 and a breed of 26. So Abby is a Sphinx, right? And then Annie with a weight of 7.6 has a breed key of 27. And so there you go. And so now you see that you've built those. If we say select count star from cat's breed, there is only six, and if we do that same thing for cat's cat, we have 104. And so, so there you go. This is a simple way of running a script and reading some stuff, and this get or create is a wonderful way to allow yourself to do many to one relationships and make sure that you're not doing uh, vertical replication in a column. So the get or create is kind of really doing almost all the work for us uh, with the vertical replication.